and that's uh, Martin. Martin, I hope you're ready. that it has ways to bring in stuff from all over the internet into one place and it always has um, I don't think people maybe even use that enough but um, it, it's uh, it, the point of it is to be somewhere where the course is defined the fourth point there it's about supporting teachers with their teaching and this is critical to me education I believe is best when you have teachers and you can see from the facilitators in this course um, that you know good teachers make all the difference uh, I love teachers uh, uh, and uh, I, I think with a world of seven billion people why would we why would be we be trying to do away with teachers and communication and, and uh, communities um, which are so essentially human it doesn't matter what technology we happen to be using whether it's a classroom or a phone, or uh, I actually did my early schooling on um, uh, School of the Air, which was a shortwave radio um, school. Uh, or the internet, it doesn't matter what you're using. Um, if you've got a person there who's giving you feedback and interacting and actually cares about you and has taken the time to understand about what you know and help you through the next steps, um, there's nothing better. and. Um, you know, we have all these people in the world, and yet so many computer scientists seem to be focusing on artificial intelligence solutions and ways of automating, and uh, I just, I really just don't like that approach. I love teachers. However, Moodle is there to support teachers with their teaching. So my goal there is to, to make tools that um, reduce the effort, and, you know, ideally, and I, I don't think Moodle's there yet, uh, I don't think very much technology is there, there yet. Ideally, technology should kind of just melt away. So you're not even thinking about particular software. But it's supporting you all the time. Um, it's also, of course, important to support learners with their learning. And um, I would say right now Moodle doesn't do that as well as it could either. Um, but it, it is one of the focuses and it's one, one big focus for the future. Um, it does. It supports learners in many ways by you know, concentrating things into places um, and by giving you um, a feed of information that you know, so that you know what what's coming up next and you know what's going on. But uh, there's still a lot more we can do there. But that's an important goal. Second last point there is that Moodle should be able to scale to any size needed. So if you are um, teaching a course with five people. And you suddenly have an opportunity to make it extend to 5,000 people. It shouldn't be um, a problem. And there's nothing internally into Moodle that actually um, stops it scaling to any size. And there are some courses that people run on Moodle that have hundreds of thousands of, of students. Um, but uh, as you get bigger and bigger, you need um, better tools and more support for teachers to be able to cope. Um, and lastly, and this is really critical, is that because of the open source platform, we invite the users of Moodle to contribute to Moodle. And those people have the opportunity to contribute to education globally. So most of the things that you see in Moodle were not written by me personally. Most of the things that are now in Moodle, uh, you know, now it's got to this size, have actually been contributed by the community. And they're written by teachers, um, developers, uh, sometimes institutions and corporate type companies as well. But all sorts of contributors to the community have contributed the different features that you see. And really, um, it's Moodle, uh, you know, my company and myself, it's our job to integrate that into one system and to make it a platform, but to also give everyone this opportunity to contribute. And I don't think there's anything better, really, than, than having an idea and then building some tool based on that idea and then having people using it. I just think that's like, you know, for me, that's, that's why I'm alive, basically. And I, there's a lot of other people, I think, who really enjoy that as well. And it's so nice for them to have 
an opportunity to do that and to, to give everything out to Moodle, through the Moodle community. So um, that's the vision for Moodle in the future. We're not there yet. We're still pushing towards this ever more perfect vision. And, uh, and so that's where we're going. Now, I was asked to speak a bit about MOOCs. And maybe you can see from the, what I've been saying is that I, I don't really think there's anything stopping anybody using Moodle as to run a MOOC. A MOOC is not so much a particular um, particular pedagogy, although you can use particular pedagogies if you want. And it's not even a particular way, a technology, and it's not a particular a way of running a course even. Um, it's a, a massively open online course. And I think um, despite what the originators of that term meant, um, it's clear that the, the, the term is being applied to so many different things. Um, I, I, I love to see, I'd love to see Moodle in MOOC. Um, and so that's why this really caught my interest, what's going on here, that I want to come along and, uh, and uh, help out. It's, you know, from my point of view, Moodle.org, which is our community website, is kind of my MOOC. Um, Ten or so years ago, when I really got that site going, the, the intention from the very beginning was to have a place where developers and users of the software could be learning from each other. And so the forums are set up as a place, um, particularly kind of smooshing all those people together, teachers and learners, both ways that is. So developers are learning from the users while the users are learning from developers and everyone's learning from each other. Um, and that's been a self-sustaining community of practice for 10 years. Um, and it's a course, if you want to, and I'm sure a lot of you who wanted to learn about Moodle, you go there. And if you really get involved, you can get involved in these forums to quite, a, quite deeply. Um, you can learn a lot. Um, and, uh, you know, I think it's pretty clear that's, that's a, it's like an online course, just maybe not uh, one that has a start and an end or maybe assessment. Um, so that's, that's basically my impression of MOOCs. I think though, um, if people are going to be using Moodle to be running very large scale open courses on the internet, there are some things that Moodle needs to improve. And so um, I want to talk a little bit about the future and what kinds of things we're doing that um, will help you run courses on a large scale, um, but also run courses with more quality as well. Um, so this, uh, <clears throat> this slide here kind of shows some um, uh, of the, the structure inside Moodle HQ. So that's, that's the company, Moodle Proprietary Limited in Perth, which is where I am. Uh, freezing right now, actually. We, we almost got down to zero degrees here. It's cold. Um, the, the company we have here has uh, nearly 30 people, and they are almost all developers. And we're organized into you know, three major teams, um, well, four teams, uh, front end and the back end. And then there's the integration team, which brings it all together. And um, then there's one other team, the sites team. So this is what we work on. We've got the, um, the front end team works on usability, especially mobile. Um, and on features. So most of the things you use and most of the cool things you'd show in a demo are probably the front, front end team. Um, now these are pretty new teams. We used to have a different arrangement until recently, um, but I, I really like this new structure and I, I think it's going to help us a lot. The back end team uh, focuses on things like performance and on Moodle as a development platform and on um, some exciting stuff right now in terms of logging and reporting. And I'll talk about that in more detail in a minute. The sites team focuses on all our sites. So this is on the community and uh, the, the plugins and um, education and um, all that sort of stuff. Um, and then there's the integration team, which is responsible for quality. Um, those are like the, uh, the gatekeepers at, the, at the, the door of Moodle. They, they allow code that gets into um, the Moodle that you use. And over the past couple of years, we've been ramping up the um, the processes around that and right now they're very strict I mean it's incredibly strict to get code into Moodle you have to pass three reviews 
um, plus um, any change to Moodle, um, everything is tested automatically. So we have now banks of computers that are running Moodle on different um, um, servers and different different browsers and doing tests and, and it's getting pretty crazy. But we're only even ranking we're even ramping that up. So the idea is that um, we try and reduce bugs to a, a very uh, a minimum. Because Moodle's a pretty complex piece of software now. It's like millions of lines of, of source code. So this is what the front end's working on in a bit more detail. So some of the things that are coming up. Um, um, the first one here, and this is coming in Moodle 2.6, is um, outcomes. We're re reworking the outcome system in Moodle. So outcomes or goals or competencies, whatever you want to call them, um, are pretty much becoming a standard way of, of tracking what, what people might know. And um, this is a very deep integration. So we're doing things like, um, if you want to do this, you don't have to, but should you want to uh, record any any grading experience. So if you make a if you answer a quiz question correctly, then that's a, a mini grading experience. So that can be recorded against a particular outcome. Um, then we can roll those up. So say you answered ten questions on a particular uh, competency or outcome correctly, then we can say okay, based on that, you know, ten you've hit some magic number we'll assume that you know that that thing and so we'll put a tick by your name um, against that particular competency we'll say you are competent in that um, but it doesn't have to be just quiz questions there's also assignments there's wikis there's forum postings there's uh, all the things that happen in moodle um, and yes with rubrics um, particularly um, on a rubric the, each criteria in a rubric can also be aligned to particular uh, competencies. And so when you grade a big assignment, for example, you might be grading against a number of competencies. And each of those will be recorded against that competency for that person. And they get recorded across courses too. So even if you've got, if you've got overlapping courses and similar competencies are being assessed in different courses, they are all about that user. And so we can take all that information and the rolling up process is the next interesting bit. It can be um, automatic um, or it can be manual and the automatic methods can be many. So there's actually plugins that define how you roll those up. And so that's a bit brief summary. In the end, you get a, a list of competencies or outcomes by user, what they know, um, what they don't know yet. And once we have that, we'll have a whole lot of development of people building things on top of that. Different reports, um, different, uh, say, automatic methods of suggesting the next course you might want to try, or uh, working out co-requisites for courses and prerequisites and things like that. So that's, uh, that's one important thing there. Um, other things the front end group working on um, is uh, mobile access. Um, uh, uh, so we are, this is actually what most of the team are working on right now, is making Moodle work really well on mobile browsers. So uh, if you go to it with an iPad, um, Moodle will, should look awesome and work awesome. Um, we also have a mobile app and uh, that's just been released recently, an HTML5 app. That's a native app that can run on Android, uh, iOS, um, and soon even Windows and uh, other platforms as well. Um, that's, that, that app will never do everything that Moodle can do. It's simply not possible. But what it will do is it'll do the things that work best offline. So if you want to capture a course and look at it when you're not connected to the internet, then you'd use, you'd use the app. If you want to get notifications about things that are happening on Moodle when you're not online, then that's what the app is good for. Um, so uh, that, that's where the app is going. It's also open source and we have a community of people um, uh, around the apps. Uh, some questions there. Samsung is Android basically, so yes. Um, yes, it works on Android. If you look in the Google Play Store, you can install it. Um, at the moment, it doesn't do very too much. 
Um, it's just the first first version now, but it's uh, really coming along well. And the idea is to have another um, community around that, building that out. Uh, analytics um, are very important. Um, there'll be lots of we're doing a lot of work with analytics, and more about that in a minute. Um, the the point of analytics is, is to give you mini reports to, for teacher and learner support when you look at the page, but also for those notifications. So what I, what I want to see within, say, six months from now is that Moodle will be texting you, basically, saying, um, look, there's something you need to know about. You know, one, this student is having trouble. You, you should probably give them a call. Here's their phone number. It's there on your phone. Or, um, you know, there's some trend going on and uh, you need to be aware of it um, so that you can maybe step into a forum and, uh, you know, facilitate or, you know, do all those kinds of things. If uh, someone says they want to work on the Moodle mobile on Android, um, fantastic. Go look at Moodle.org. There's a news post on the front page there about it, with some links um, just recently. Um, yeah, Alfredo, basically it's early alert system is one thing, but there are many other things that we can think up once we have the data, and that's, that's the, next, the next bit um, that I want to talk about. Um, of course, there's also a lot of stuff the front end are working on the basic course management uh, of courses, which is the bread and butter, and um, a lot of activities are getting a renewal. So assignment is being upgraded, forum will be upgraded, wiki and survey and uh, all of them are getting improvements. Um, this is a screenshot of what the app looks like on a tablet. It's an iPad actually in this case. Um, that's a little bit old actually. It's, it's been improved since then even. Um, but you get a bit of an idea of what the app looks like. The, uh, the Moodle interface itself may look like this too. So as we improve how Moodle works on a mobile browser, it's going to become more and more like an app. Um, so uh, yeah, I can talk about 2.5, but someone asked me about the release schedule. A lot of this is sort of in progress. Some of it's actually already nearly there, um, and some of it's coming in 2.6. OK. Now, the back-end team, that's um, really uh, focused right now on the basic thing that's underlying all this analytics and the outcome stuff is logging. Um, we're building very, very fast and detailed logs. Now, this can be maybe boring, but um, it's, it's so essential that we have good logging. We, we need to um, collect the data. And the reason we need to collect the data is for those analytics, but also, um, uh, for our researchers, and I'll, I'll get towards that at the end. But it's so people can study what's actually going on in a learning environment. Uh, they're working on reporting, fast ways of reporting. There's a lot of performance to make Moodle faster. A lot of this has been happening in 2.3, 2.4 already. Um, the caching stuff, the notifications that I mentioned before, um, so the messages go straight to mobile devices. Um, that, that'll be coming in 2.6. Scaling is very important. Um, and there's a bunch of things being done to make Moodle work better on clustered servers. And we're building um, clustered systems with Moodle. Um, actually, very soon, Moodle.org will go live um, with not only you know, a new look, but also running on a, on a cluster. That um, at any time, if, if we need more web servers or more databases, press a button and you get it. Um, and it can scale up and down. So if you're running a, a MOOC, say, um, with 100,000 students, they're not all going to be on at the same time. When they are on, then you can bump up the process of power, and when they're not on, you can wind it down again. And that's really the, the point of, uh, of clustering um, uh, things properly. So there's a, there's a bunch of things in there that, we, that we're working on that will make that work better. It's possible now, but it's going to be easier in the future. Um, now, the other team, it's not strictly about Moodle developer, but more about our sites. Um, 
just thought I'd give you some heads up. Moodle.org is about to get a big revamp. Uh, we've been working on it for some time. We've been distracted by other things, but everyone's onto it right now. Um, it'll be a very clean new interface. Um, it's going to be a very international website. The forums in all the different languages will be there on the front page when you arrive. So if you arrive there using a Spanish browser, you'll see the Spanish forums right on the front page. Um, and uh, lots and lots of simplification and uh, clarification on that site. That I'm very embarrassed about Moodle.org right now. It looks terrible. Um, there's, there's a lot we can do and it's going to look good. Um, the second thing there is about Moodle.net. And that was formerly called Mooch. Some of you may know Mooch. That was um, the uh, Moodle.org Open Community Hub. And I coined that word before MOOCs were around. Um, it, it, um, but MOOC uh, also is an English word that means to kind of, uh, well, not, not steal so much, but, uh, you know, just borrow from somebody and not give it back. So we, um, the, I quite like that name, but not many people really got it, and we never really promoted it. Um, but MOOC is a place where people can share their courses. And we've been doing that for years, quietly, um, and allowing people to share their courses um, in two ways. One is just to advertise them to each other, but secondly, they can also upload whole courses under common, a Creative Commons license. And, um, whoops, these slides keep going up and down. I'm not sure if I have control over them or not. Um, uh, they, you can share your courses as open educational resources. And um, that's not been, um, uh, it's hundreds of people have been doing it, but it's probably not very wide, widely known. So we decided to uh, rename it to Moodle.net, and we're going to be calling it Moodle.net and uh, relaunching it, basically, um, with a, like a, a proper you know, a new name and a new look. Um, and eventually, Moodle.net will be a place where you, where you can find out about Moodle courses that are running all around the world. Um, and a lot of those will be MOOCs, but not all of them will be. So if you have a course and you maybe are charging even $10 entry for this course or whatever it is or, or that's free, you can advertise it there and people can find it and come to you. And um, so we'll really be um, uh, improving that. It's um, a very nice thing with Mooch, with Moodle.net, is, um, ah, this slides keep going up and down for some reason. Um, the one nice thing about Moodle.net is that your, um, uh, web, your Moodle site, when you register your Moodle site, there's a registration button, it actually connects to Moodle.net. And your Moodle site is then linked to it. So in the, your Moodle interface, you'll see there's a, next to your course, there's a publish button. And that's how you can publish your entire course onto Moodle.net. Uh, likewise, there is a block called the community block where you can download courses directly into your Moodle. This feature has been around since Moodle 2.2. Or something quite a long time but I don't think many people are using it yet but we really want to um, get this using used because I think the potential for educators sharing courses um, while I know educators are, are, are usually they're, they're terrible at sharing resources and frankly you know I very rarely even use my own resources again um, I never use the same presentation twice I always you know you always tweak them don't you every time you do something you tweak it and it's the same with courses, but I think um, if you can get a good an, an example of best practice or a good example of a course in your field from someone else, that will help you get started with Moodle. That helps you um, see what's possible, and then you start maybe um, you start hacking on that course and, and changing it to your needs. Um, and hopefully that sh sh saves some effort. Um, and enables people to produce better quality courses or teach more students or spend more time with your students rather than, uh, than developing the same old resources. Because really it shouldn't be, teachers shouldn't be textbook producers, right? They shouldn't be making resources and they shouldn't be making 
um, things. They should be using what's around and um, teaching it, in my opinion. So, um, yeah, other things, Moodle Docs, uh, videos, uh, we're doing a lot, of, a lot of things there as well. Now, a little bit of summary on 2.5. Um, 2.5 got released uh, just a couple, a few weeks ago. Um, it's the latest, uh, the latest release. Uh, we release twice a year, um, every May and every November. So our releases are bound by time, not by features. And the way we work is we, we work on our new next features. If we don't finish them in time, they don't get into the release and we release with whatever was finished. Um, so that, that leads to some predictability. Um, so what's new? There's the first thing here is bootstrap themes. Um, Moodle straight away, if you use these themes, bootstrap based themes, it just looks a lot better. It looks a lot more modern. Uh, it works better on mobile already. The pages will um, resize nicely on tablets and on um, phones. And uh, although there's not many bootstrap based themes yet, the themes are all very busy starting to turn them out. So um, it's, it's a nice, if you're doing new themes with Moodle, then Try and base it on a bootstrap theme, and uh, I think it's going to be uh, quite a revolution with how Moodle looks. The um, second thing here is open badges. Badges are a beautiful little thing. Um, open badges is an open standard from Mozilla, and the Moodle implementation is completely compatible. So uh, you can do some really nice things, such as, for example, uh, as soon as someone posts to any forum, you can automatically give them a, you know, uh, congratulations for getting started badge or something. You can do that automatically um, using the, um, the features in Moodle for uh, activity completion. Um, or you might um, give manual badges. So if you think someone's doing really well or, or has achieved something or uh, whatever you want to encourage them with, you can give them, you can give them a badge for that. And you make your own badges. You make um, uh, you can have site-wide badges, and you can have course-wide badges. So individual teachers can make their own badges. the The badge in, badges in Moodle integrate then with external. Uh, they call them backpacks. There's only really one around at the moment. It's the one that Mozilla run, and it's a place an openbadges.org where you can store your badges. So the students. Whoever gets a badge can can push them out to these external places. But the really nice thing about badges is that the image itself, the actual image that you see, is the badge. It contains metadata. So you can take that image and actually download it and put it in a even a, well, maybe not a word document, but you can put it in a web page or you can upload it to Twitter or something. And the badge still contains the metadata and someone can still upload that image and check that it is actually a badge from wherever they said it was um, because there's some digital signing going on. So it's quite nice. With a badge, you can actually uh, click a link to go back to the original Moodle site and it'll tell you whether it's a real badge or not. So they're, they're hard to fake um, and it's, it's a quite nice way to build up a portfolio of these badges. The badges can be um, uh, about very, very simple things, like I mentioned already, or if you want, you can use them for full certification. So we're, we're planning to use them for the, um, we, we, we run a Moodle certification uh, thing, the Moodle partners run them, and if you want to be certified as a, a Moodle uh, certified course creator, um, then you can take the certification. But as well as giving a, um, a signed PDF that we do now, uh, we're going to be giving these badges as well. So you can just stick that into your um, portfolio. Um, or as someone just mentioned in the chat, um, LinkedIn, etc. Now, badge design is quite an interesting thing. So if you're interested, look up, uh, maybe do a Google search on badges system design, and you'll see there's quite a lot of work going on, people um, planning and designing badge structures. Now, you can get too carried away with badges as a motivator, but it was really interesting in the recent, uh, we had an iMoot recently, 
um, where there were badges available on the Moodle site on there, um, to, to see all these educators getting really excited about achieving all the badges. You know, they got really motivated. Um, and these are, you know, um, uh, uh, let's say mature people like us. Um, so, you know, with uh, it works with all, all ages, I think. Um, and you can get too carried away with it, but I still think it's a useful tool to be used in the right way. Okay, um, lots of other things in 2.5. Um, we've a lot of usability things. Um, forms are all look a lot shorter. And, and uh, we've uh, just, so they're not so confronting now when you, when you open a form. We've got uh, the course listings um, have now been fixed and, and prettied up. They're more consistent. You can also add files now to your courses. And I mean that, I mean to the course description. So, for example, if you have a course that you have, you can't, you can't get in unless you've enrolled or paid or whatever to get into the course. You can still, with that, on the front page, still provide an image of the course or perhaps even a PDF or some file like that. So maybe it, it's a PDF which is an outline of the course, um, and that lets people see something about the course before they get in. Uh, we also, you can also put inline folders on the course page. Um, we've done um, a really nice thing here, the plugin installations, uh, which, can I draw on this thing? Can I? Mm, not really. Oops. Oh, there we go. So um, you can install a plugin directly now, Moodle.org. So if, if you go to Moodle.org and look on the plugins list, uh, you can click on um, a plugin to install it. It takes you back to your Moodle site and installs that plugin. So it's all on the web. You don't. If you set it up correctly in the first place, you don't have to go and muck around with um, command lines or FTP to install new plugins or to update plugins either. Um, so you can. Uh, that question, no, you don't have to be a developer. No, this is, yes, it is, this is all free, and I'm not sure if we're answering the same questions, but um, yes, it's all the free plugins. Um, it works, if you've ever used WordPress, it's a bit like that, um, and it means that you can maintain your Moodle site directly from the web, and you don't need to go to the command line. Um, you just need to have it set up originally in the first place, because by default, usually, you can't overwrite the files from the web for security reasons. But if you open that up, you can do it. And what some people might do is just quickly um, change the file permissions, then do all this stuff through the web, and then change the file permissions back. And that just makes it a lot easier to install things. Um, and this is all about making Moodle more like an operating system. Uh, yeah, the assignments, you can now do resubmissions in the assignments. So you can have the students uh, submit and a, a draft, you can make comments on it or even grade it and say, have another shot. The uh, student gets those back, they do another assignment submission. You can do that as many times as you like until the final submission. And so you kind of have a dialogue going through the assignment submission process where you're uh, helping the student um, improve. Um, lastly, this is a bit of a technical thing, the BHAT integration. This is about interface testing. And I wish I could show you now, I haven't got anything prepared so much, but um, uh, we, we do these automatic interface tests um, where uh, auto, like robots are basically using Moodle features and making sure they're working. And they do hundreds of them, and they do them every night. Um, so um, it's, it's a way of testing Moodle. And people, when they extend Moodle, can, can actually use those too. Um, so that's really more for developers, but it's about it's about improving quality. Uh, the last thing I wanted to uh, just mention before I turn completely to questions is um, that uh, we we started a research conference, and um, this is one of my pet projects: is that um, I, I started moving from a research basis, and then I got really stuck for about ten years just implementing <laughs> and carrying through on the original ideas. And um, 
I really want to get back to a, a research directed um, way of doing things. So we started this research um, conference and we had the first one last year and it was in Crete. Uh, we, even that first one, we had 120 people or something from 22 countries. And the, it's, what we're looking for is people are doing proper research. This is a real research conference. You have to have a paper. We only accepted about 50% of the papers that were submitted, which is not bad for a first conference. Um, it's going to be bigger this year. Um, it's now in Tunisia, in Sousse. And um, if you're interested in the, the papers from last year, look at research.moodle.net. They're all um, under Creative Commons. They're all open there. Um, and what we're really trying to do is build a culture of people who look at the data and, and come up with some truths, right? So what, what is better? What is the best way to be doing things online? And with the stuff I was telling you about before, about this new logging, it's about creating a very, very rich data set so that you know uh, the student clicked on this link at this time and they did this and here's the whole sequence of things that they did. Um, so that data has two uses. One is all the analytics and the notifications of that and the learning support and teaching support. But the second one is to provide researchers with the data to do deep educational research online. And I think Moodle is the perfect tool for this. Because it's open source, um, you have uh, the ability to, to really get into this system and study what people are doing. You can, um, for example, set up a scenario where you have, in a group of 100 students, um, 10 groups of 10, each doing some, some of the same things in a slightly different way. And then maybe you could compare the results, right? Do some comparative research like that. Um, and there's many other things that, that, that people are doing. So uh, if any of you is a researcher, um, I'd love it, if you're interested in Moodle, to get involved with this. Um, we're, we're looking for papers for this year still. So there's still time. And uh, it's in October. So um, yeah, I encourage you to maybe get involved if you're interested at all. Or even if you know someone who's doing a master's or a PhD, uh, you know, this might be a nice sort of a, a conference for them to, to go. So the, the link there is research.moodle.net. It's a simple site, uh, but it should explain all you need. So, uh, questions. I saw Nadav coming in here. He was wanting to know something. What was that? Why Moodle's not being used for this course? I think it was. Um, well, I'm not running this MOOC, um, and uh, I uh, maybe uh, for Nelly to answer. But uh, from from what I understand, um, that she's a bit worried about the number of people hitting her little Moodle server, and that's fair enough. And some of the things I was talking about above are exactly about that, about making Moodle um, cheap and scalable. Um, there is a Moodle site, I believe. It just might be a bit more difficult to find. Um, but uh, anyway, talk to Nelly about, about that and uh, we're, at least we're doing what we are doing with Moodle to hopefully make it work better with larger scale. Um, any other questions? I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Uh, it's flicking by fast, so I can't promise I answer everything. What is Moodle still doing to address building metacognition skills? Well, that seems to be the job of the teacher to, um, um, more than Moodle itself. Um, yeah, Moodle is the tool helping teachers to do those things. Uh, I'm going to have to answer very quickly on these to try and answer some of these. Uh, yeah, scrolling up and down. Um, Jamie, uh, just following on from there, if you still uh, have, if you have ideas, then we really welcome those ideas, and that's the same for anybody here. If you have good ideas about what Moodle could be doing or should be doing, 
then you should be coming to Moodle.org um, and either talking on the forums or we have a tracker. And, uh, if you look for the Moodle tracker, that's where all the ideas, that's where all the development happens. And um, just get them in there. Yeah, and that's how we develop. Uh, Dominic, you won't see me at Bordeaux next week. I'm going to be online. Uh, I what's the difference between Moodle and WizIQ? Well, Moodle is a mostly asynchronous learning management system, and WizIQ is more of a synchronous um, classroom. And you're looking at it, um, and they work well together. Moodle works well with lots of different synchronous systems. Uh, WizIQ. Big blue button, uh, lots of them. Um, and there, if you look on Moodle plugins, there's a, for all of those, there's a plugin that makes it quite nicely interact uh, with Moodle. So you can add an activity in Moodle that will take you into a synchronous system. Uh, do we use Moodle for institutional course purpose? Uh, lots of people do, um, of course. Lots of institutions, actually nearly 60% of universities in Australia use Moodle, for example. Um, so although we have a lot of very small institutions, we, we also have lots of large ones as well all over the place. And I see the large fonts. Uh, uh, how do people show photos on Moodle? Uh, there is some plugins that do galleries. Um, you can use um, uh, you can use folders as well, a folder activity. Um, but you can also use something on the internet. So if there's a really cool slideshow thing, maybe Flickr Flickr does great slideshows. Well, you can just add that as a resource in Moodle and embed it. So you're not limited to the tools in Moodle. Um, you use anything you can grab on the internet. Uh, I'm getting behind here. Uh, Moodle certified local trainers would be a good idea. Um, there, we we have the certification for Moodle course creators. Um, the only certified local trainers. Uh, mostly, well, mostly partners, Moodle partners. So Moodle.com. Um, Michaela, Pets is asking, is Moodle very expensive? Um, it's Moodle the software is free. Completely free. So. However, the time to run it, it does take time. Um, so that time, time is money. Um, if you can do it yourself, then you do it yourself. And if you've got someone who can do it around, then great. Um, but different people will charge different amounts to help you with anything, just like everything else. But uh, it's pretty easy to run a Moodle site, I think. Uh, has the chat been developed at all? Chat has not evolved much in quite a long time, actually. It's been a bit neglected. Um, and that's one of the things the front end team are going to have to look at, I think. Um, however, like I said, if you've got a great chat somewhere else, use that and um, just link it to Moodle. Uh, oof, getting a bit lost with all these questions now. I'm sort of skipping down a few at random. Um, Mahoodle, Moodle, Mahara, Angel, are they all the same? No. Nope. Um, well, so Mahara is a portfolio system. Uh, Angel is another LMS like Moodle, but that got bought by Blackboard and is pretty much being shut down. 
not many people using Angel anymore. It was a very nice system, and I'm actually friends with the, the guy who um, started Angel. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, we're in, the, in this sort of IT industry, the, the developers were all very kind of pretty friendly to each other. Um, so, um, but uh, we'll, people make different decisions about whether things are open or free or not. I think at some point, depending on uh, how many mouths they have to feed and how they can make it work. Uh, we are so some MOOC on oh, Nadav. Are you doing some MOOCs? Are you okay? Good, great. We should. Uh, what you should do actually is make sure Nadav that they're on Moodle.net. That would be nice. Um, and we'll improve Moodle.net so they're highlighted these things. Okay. Uh, I'm finding it hard to scroll here because I scroll too fast. Um, does Moodle support multiple in different locations supporting Marty, load balancing? The uh, that's what I was talking about clustering. Um, Yes, if you're pretty experienced, um, you can set that up. It's it's not trivial because you have to worry about the data being synchronized. Um, however, um, we are improving some of the features uh, there to make that better and easier. Um, so um, yes, it supports it, but it needs work. Um, any I did mention some new features for 2.6 already, so if you missed it, sorry. Um, but the outcomes is probably the major one, and uh, some of the mobile interface stuff, and logging. They should all be in 2.6. Um, if you do search for Moodle roadmap, you'll find our current roadmap. Uh, is there a maximum number of learners that Moodle 2.5 supports? No. Um, that's limited by your hardware. Um, I'm skipping down faster now. How pop, what is the Arab institutional popularity on Moodle? I don't know. You need to tell me. Um, but if you look on Moodle.org, look under uh, About Moodle on the menu, the sites there, you'll see a listing of registered sites. They're people who've told us that they're using Moodle, and there's quite a lot basically everywhere. Um, don't understand some of these questions. Sorry, there's so many. I'm just gonna have to jump through. Um, can we use Moodle Tool Quality Assurance? Uh, sure. Um, people use Moodle in very funny ways. Lots of different things. Some of the uses I hear about it, like there was an uh, ISP, an internet provider, were using Moodle um, purely. Well, what they did was they put their their manuals, their documentation in there, and then on the help desk would say, if you're having a problem, go and look at our documentation. And then the people would say, they'd ring back and say, oh, I looked at the documentation and I couldn't find the answer. And the, they were able to, because of the tracking, they could say, no, you didn't. You didn't look at this page. We know you didn't. And that's the only thing that's not educational really at all. But um, so funny things going on with open source. Um, what effects do you predict free Moodle courses such as MOOCs will have in the current university structure worldwide? Uh, look, not much. I think MOOCs are a great idea. I think, basically, I think it's great people are opening up courses this way. Um, any learning is good learning. Any online learning um, is uh, can be useful. Uh, but I think what you'll find is that universities will have some of their courses running in this sort of open way and some of them not and um, they will use them for different purposes. Um, I don't, it's very, very rare that a new thing replaces all the old things just in general, it's my observation. Um, we still use books, uh, we still use radio, um, we just use them less or some of the time but you know, we seem to just sort of take on new things and it all gets integrated. Will they evolve? Okay. Uh, yeah, lots of questions. Seems like we need to wrap up. Um, uh, 
uh, skipping down the bottom. Uh, UK institutions or companies. Uh, well, look at Moodle.com and look under UK and you'll see them. Uh, pick up question on update for blogs and wikis. Um, I don't. I seriously don't think blogs are going to be much updated. Um, uh, but um, the you realise with blogs actually, it's better to use an external blog. So you get your students to use their blogs outside. And in Moodle, you can actually specify the RSS feed of an external blog, and it synchronises with it. So. Use all your great blog tools outside, and the data gets synchronized into Moodle so that you can find it in Moodle as well. So that's a blog feature that we have there. Um, Wiki, on the other hand, which is really great. Wiki, on the other hand, seriously does need an update and is really high on the list. Um, and uh, there is a potential candidate for a new Wiki from Open University. That's the one they use there. Um, but there needs to be a gap analysis done on, on how, how well that can replace the wiki that we have now. Um, yes, workshops had quite a bit of um, uh, work recently. Um, so one of my developers who is the workshop developer, David Mudrak, um, he continues working on it and refining it. Um, uh, can't answer the question about Coursera. Edmodo, really, I don't look at other other systems much. I'm too busy with Moodle, so we just kind of be, we just we we have our own community telling us what to do, and we do those things. So we don't. It's not. I'm not like a CEO of a competitive commercial company against other competitive commercial companies, and just. Martin, you can copy the chat. Uh, 